Good evening, everyone, and welcome to the Downingtown Cyber Academy Open House. My name is Christy Burke, and I am the coordinator of online learning for the Downingtown Area School District. I just wanted to start by telling you a little bit about myself. I actually taught my first online course as a high school English teacher in a district right outside of Boston, and that was in 2001. So I have been working in cyber education for about the last 19 years. Since then, uh, I moved to Pennsylvania and I taught online for Immaculata and Eastern Universities. I earned my instructional technology degree from Temple and I'm currently earning my doctorate in instructional technology and hope to be finished within the next two years or at least before my son graduates from high school. So I just want to share two places that you can go to get additional information before we go much further. First, you can send me an email at any time. The email address is cyberacademy at dasd.org. And you can also go to the downtown Cyber Academy website, which is dasd.org slash cyber. And there's a lot of information there about the cyber program that I'll be talking about throughout this presentation. So what I wanna to do tonight is start by giving you an overview of the program, tell you a little bit about the history of the program, the current status, explain to you what a week for a student may look like in the cyber program, talk about registration, and then answer any questions at the end. I did do a, an open house in June. So if you attended that open house, I'm going to be going over most of the same information. There are a few new things that we've added over the summer, but for the most part, this will be the same information if you attended in June. So the first is the just an overview of the Downingtown Cyber Academy. The Downingtown Cyber Academy has actually been around since 2011. We started out in 2011 using a third party provider. So that meant that we bought our courses from a vendor and used the vendor's teachers to teach the cyber courses. Right around 2013, 14 was when I was hired and we started having our own Downingtown teachers teaching those third party courses. At the same time, we had teachers that were starting to develop the courses in Schoology to use in our summer school program and also to do some pilots to see how they were working with our students. Right around 2016 is when we started using 100% of our own teachers to teach our courses, both in Schoology and in a third party platform. And our teachers were developing about 20 to 30 courses every year in Schoology. Back in 14-15, we started out with about 17 total students. And as you can see on the screen, uh, this is our cyber enrollment, by the way, at the top. As you can see on the screen, we have increased over the years. In this past school year, 1920, we had 355 students who took at least one cyber course through the school year. And that's not counting the 1,280 high school students that were also taking a blended course in the 1920 school year. There are a lot of benefits, I think, to participating in the Downingtown Cyber Academy. We know that our parents have choices and that there are cyber charter schools out there, but we think that the Downingtown Cyber Academy offers a lot of benefits that the cyber charters cannot offer. The first is that our courses use the same curriculum and resources that our face-to-face -face classes use. So what that means is that the students are 
basically reading the same books and using the same digital resources in the cyber program that the face-to-face -face students would be using. Also, 100% of the staff are Downingtown Area School District employees. So it's going to be the same teachers, the same principal, the same counselors, whether you're in the cyber program or you're in the brick and mortar building. And also, and I think this is the most important, students in the Downingtown Cyber Academy remain a part of their home building. And they graduate with a Downingtown diploma. I think that is a huge benefit over a cyber charter school. Because even if a student is full-time cyber, let's say that they were a Downingtown East student, even if they never went into Downingtown East, they would be considered a Downingtown East student. They could go, go to all the clubs and activities and participate in sports. They can attend field trips if there were any. So basically anything that it, the prom, basically anything that the brick and mortar student could do, the cyber student could do as well. So they stay a part of that community, which I think is really important. In addition to that, because you are still a part of that building, you graduate with a diploma from that building. And I think that is another huge benefit of staying with the, with the Downingtown Cyber Academy as opposed to going to a, a charter. And so, for example, if you look at a student's transcript, let's say you have a ninth grader uh, or a student who was in ninth grade last year. And this year that student decides to go to a cyber charter school. So for example, they decide to go to PALCS and then they decide to come back their junior year. When you look at the student's transcript, it'll say ninth grade, Downingtown East, and it will have all the students' courses on it. Then it'll say 10th grade, PALCS, and it'll have all of the courses that that student took in that cyber charter school. And then 11th grade, it'll go back to Downingtown East. So it actually says that on the transcript. If the student is in the Downingtown Cyber Academy, in ninth grade, it would say Downingtown East. And then if they were full-time cyber in 10th grade, it would still say Downingtown East. And then if they went back into the brick and mortar in 11th grade, it would still say Downingtown East. And actually, it doesn't even indicate anywhere on the transcript that the courses were cyber. Because we very strongly believe that it doesn't matter what format the students are taking a course in, whether they're taking a traditional course face-to-face, -face, a blended course where they're face-to-face -face for part of the time, or a cyber course where they're never face-to-face -face with the teacher and it's completely online. Regardless of those three formats, we believe that we are giving the students the same high quality education with rigor and engagement and student agency. Another benefit of doing the Downingtown Cyber Academy as opposed to a cyber charter is with a student's schedule. So students can actually choose to be part-time cyber students. So they can take some online cyber courses through the Downingtown Cyber Academy, and they can continue to take some classes or courses in their home building. You may have seen this graphic that was recently added to our website, but I just wanted to talk about it here. You can, you can see it more clearly if you go to dasdorg slash cyber. But basically there are three different types of courses or schedules that a student can do. And so we just wanted to make sure that parents understood this vocabulary. So the first is a blended course that I mentioned before. A blended course is only available to our high school students, grades nine to 12. A blended course is one that meets 50% of the time face-to-face -face and 50% of the time online. So for example, if a student is taking a one credit course, that course typically meets six times in a cycle. So in a blended course, the student would meet three times in a cycle, but would still have the same expectations for workload and material that they would need to learn online for the rest of the time. 
So that is a blended course. A hybrid schedule is done by schedule and not by course. So a hybrid schedule, another term that I use for a hybrid schedule is that you're part-time cyber. Part-time cyber or, blended, or a hybrid schedule means that some of your courses are online, completely online, and some of your courses are face-to-face. -face. So you are looking at your schedule and you're going through course by course and you're saying, what am I going to take face-to-face -face, and what am I going to take online? And finally, full-time means that you don't come into the building at all. So hybrid is part-time and then the full-time means that you're home completely doing your work online. You never come into the building for your academics. So I did not have this schedule in the open house the last time. So this is new, but I thought it might be helpful for parents to see what I mean by blended part-time and cyber. So this is the, an example of a high school student's course. And obviously this is not the whole schedule, uh, I'm sorry, high school students schedule. This is obviously not all of their courses, but you can see the, the last three periods of this student's day. So in period six, this student has English. Notice English is a one credit course. Notice that the student takes English every day, sixth period with Mrs. Burke in room 324. So that's what we refer to as a traditional course, meets every day face-to-face. In period seven, the student is also taking American Gov. But American Gov is a blended course. It's still a one credit course. It's still the same amount of work. But instead of meeting six times in a cycle, the student meets with the teacher and the class three times a cycle. So on, on days A, C, and E, the student will have class but the student does not have class on B, D, and F day. And then the student has nothing scheduled for eighth period because the student is taking a cyber course. And the cyber course that the student is taking is natural disasters. So this course, if you look on a student's schedule, it'll say cyber. This student's course is done outside of the eight period schedule. So this is an example of a traditional class a blended class, and a completely cyber course. I wanted to give a similar schedule for an elementary student. So an elementary student in this example has decided to be cyber, but wants to do a hybrid schedule. And by the way, I haven't mentioned this before, but the hybrid schedule is not actually uh, a reaction to the pandemic. The Downingtown Cyber Academy has always offered part-time schedules to our students. So this is really nothing new. So this elementary student wants to take all of their courses online except for math and art. So sci all the cyber courses here, I didn't list them all, but science, social studies, ELA and so forth, but the student wants to come in for math. Math at the student's elementary school is 9.30 to 11 o'clock. So the student would come in for math with Miss Kenny and take math every day, A through F day. Now, because math does not start until 9.30, then the, the parent can either decide to let the student ride the bus or, and take whatever comes in between nine o'clock and 9.30, or the parent can bring the student in just for the class at 9.30. When math is over at 11 o'clock, the parent would pick the student up and take the student home, except on C day when the student has art. So the student has decided that he or she wants to come in for art. It's scheduled in this building on C day. It's from 11 to 11.45. So on C day, the student would stay, come in for math, stay for art, and then go home. All right, so this is an example of a hybrid 
or a part-time schedule for students. And I'm going to talk a little later on about how you register for a part-time schedule. Uh, some, some parents have been asking me about the, the hybrid schedule and saying, is it every day or is it every other day? And it, it actually depends on the class or the course that you're teaching. I'm sorry, that you're taking. So if you're taking a class that meets every day, then you would have to come in every day. But if the class doesn't meet every day, then you wouldn't have to come in. So at the high school level, for example, if you were taking a half credit course that only met three times a cycle, you would only need to come in for those three meetings. Same thing with a blended course. So the next thing that I wanted to talk about is special education. If a student has a 504, an IEP, or a GIP, what'll happen is when a student registers for the Cyber Academy, there will be an alert that will go to the school and the 504 IEP or GIP team will meet, invite the parent in for a meeting or hold it over Zoom, depending on what's appropriate and discuss whatever supports are necessary for the student to access the program of study. So that is a, a team meeting where the parents and the rest of the team get together and talk about what will work for the student. The team will then make any necessary adjustments to the IEP 504 GIEP. And of course, cyber teachers are required to comply with any modifications and accommodations that are necessary for that student. And the student continues to have a case manager that is from their building. The role of the parent and the guardian is obviously different if you have a second grader versus a 12th grader. But we hope to partner with parents who have children in the Cyber Academy to really prioritize education in the home, help the students to find an appropriate place to do their cyber work, create a schedule that works for the family for when the student will be doing the work and whether or not the student will be going into one of the uh, into the building for one or more classes. The parent, especially for our elementary students, will monitor the students during a live Zoom session, for example. They'll assist students with the lessons if that's needed, although remember the parents, not the teacher. So it's just a matter of assisting the student, not having to teach the student. And most importantly to us, that the parent communicates with the teacher on a regular basis so that the teacher knows if the student is struggling or has any issues that the teacher needs to be made aware of. In terms of materials, there are sometimes materials, physical materials, that are needed for our courses. Our cyber courses in general really try to use digital materials whenever possible, but sometimes we will have a novel, a textbook, a workbook, some sort of supplies that will need to um, go home to the student. And so if any of those supplies are necessarily necessary, we will make sure that we get them to the student and more information about how to get the materials and how to pick them up will be coming out later. For devices, our students K to eighth grade will use an iPad and participate as part of the one-to-one -one program and our high school students will use their district laptop. Just a reminder that if you're in the Downingtown Cyber Academy, the students are learning the same curriculum as they would if they were in the brick and mortar and are also using all of the same tools such as IXL and Flipgrid and Wonders that the face-to-face -face students would be using. We do follow the Downingtown Area School District calendar. We are on the same calendar, same schedule, same in-service days, vacations, holidays, early dismissals, 
which I guess doesn't really count unless you're a part-time cyber, but all of those things are the same. I've been getting a lot of questions about these two things for our high school students. And so I just wanted to make sure that I touched upon them. The first is our student athletes. So our student athletes, if they're planning to play athletics in college, will need to be eligible. And so I'm happy to tell you that most, almost all of our cyber courses are NCAA approved. If they're approved in the brick and mortar, they're approved in the Downingtown Cyber Academy, which is great. If you're a student athlete and you are interested in the Downingtown Cyber Academy, just please make sure you coordinate with the NCAA liaison that is at your building. The other question that I get frequently is about TCHS. TCHS is our technical college high school and we often get questions about whether or not TCH, TCHS students can also do cyber, and the answer is yes. So typically, if a student's in TCHS, they come into the high schools for the first four periods, and then they ride a bus to go over to TCHS. They do their thing there, then they ride the bus back to the school, and then they go home. If you are in the cyber program, and again, you can be part-time or full-time, even if you're doing TCHS, but let's say you're full-time. If you're full-time cyber, but you still wanna participate in TCHS, you have a choice. You can either come to the building to, let's say you're a West student, you can go to West, ride the bus to TCHS and ride the bus back, or you can just drive directly to TCHS, but you will have to provide your own transportation. Okay, so next I just wanted to talk about a week in the life and, and give you a little glimpse as to what that might look like for a student. So I'm gonna start with the elementary schedule. These are approximations. So a lot of this depends on the student and uh, whether or not a student knows the material or maybe needs to go over material again. So these are approximations. But during the course of the week, students in our elementary schools, so that's K to five, will spend about, about 60 minutes a day on math, about 60 minutes a day on reading, and then a half an hour on content, which is either science or social studies, half an hour on writing, and then a half an hour on Encore. And the encores that are available in the cyber program at the elementary level will be music, art, library, PE, and health. And we have some amazing elementary teachers that are currently working on our elementary cyber courses, making sure that they are ready to go for the first day of school. And one of the things that they're really focusing on is making sure that there's a variety of plugged and unplugged activities. Because I think most parents agree that they don't necessarily want their child on their iPad all day long. So the teachers are really trying to incorporate activities where the student doesn't necessarily have to be on an iPad. They could be reading a physical book they could be writing or drawing or doing some other kind of activity that doesn't involve a device. This is an example of what a uh, agenda would look like in Schoology for an um, elementary student. So I just wanted to give you kind of a little peek into a cyber course for an elementary student. So typically when a student logs in, they will have basically what I'm calling a checklist. So they'll have a little checklist when they log in that will tell them for math, notice up here it says week seven, October 12th to the 16th. It tells them what they're going to be learning. And then across the top, it'll say the day of the week and what they should be doing that day. And so this is really 
been very helpful for students. I know that some teachers did this in the spring and got some good positive feedback from parents, which is why we incorporated it into the cyber program that students really appreciated having this checklist that they could go through and either check it off digitally or print it out and check it off. But for them to be able to see what they're supposed to do every day. Now, even though this has a Monday through Friday schedule, Notice up at the top, it says suggested pacing. So in our cyber program, students are working on a week long basis. So students have the whole week to do these activities. So if for example, on Tuesday, the student really gets involved in their ELA work and decides they wanna just keep on going and maybe they don't get to math, then the student can certainly do Tuesday's math work on Wednesday as well. So this is just a, suggest, a suggested pacing guide for students, but there's a lot of flexibility in there within the week. And then right below that um, agenda will be all of the activities that the student will need to do. So, and they're labeled so that the student and the parent knows what they are. But so in this example, they may be watching a video, they may be doing uh, an IXL activity, they, there may be an activity where they're reading and then they're going offline to do some writing activity and then they're coming back to do a discussion. So the students are walking through step-by-step step for the week what it is they're supposed to do. There is a live synchronous component to this as well, which I'll talk about a little later. In addition to some of the some of the things the students will be watching and doing is they may be asked to watch pre recorded videos. So the teachers will record some of some lessons and the teacher and the student will be able to play it view it. They can rewind watch it again if they need to, um, but it's there for their viewing throughout the week. So now I'm going to switch over to secondary, which is six to through 12th grade. If you're a secondary student, you are going to be spending approximately 50 minutes a day on your core subjects if you're in middle school and uh, on a one credit course if you're in high school. And again, this is approximate. For encores or half credit electives at the high school, it's about 50 to 60 minutes every other day for a half credit or every third day for a 0.33. But that's what you would be spending in a classroom if you were face to face. Keep in mind that not only would you be in the class every day for about 50 minutes, but you would also be doing homework. So however much homework you would typically get in that class for that grade or for that level, you also want to be calculating in that amount of time. So obviously, if you're taking an AP course, advanced placement will probably require you to spend a little more time on that course than maybe a grade level course. The platforms that we have at the middle and high school level will be Schoology or Ingenuity. So at the elementary level, it's all Schoology. At the secondary level, most of our courses, most of our core and most of our encore slash elective courses are in Schoology. We have a few electives that are still in Edgenuity. For example, some of those AP courses that I mentioned before. So for example, AP Calculus AB would be in Edgenuity. This is an example of what a course would look like in the Downtown Cyber Academy if you were in this example, if you were in high school. So when a student logs in, kind of similar to what you would see at the elementary level, but the student will log in, it'll say the week, it'll tell the students what they're going to be learning. So we're doing Catcher in the Rye, and then in parentheses, it'll tell them the day of the week. So the students always know what day it is and they can find the week that they're supposed to be in very quickly. The week always begins with the agenda, which I'm gonna show you in a minute. And then there is a 
a list of activities or a group of activities that the students are going to be doing in that order. And they can be any number of things. They can be an introduction to the topic that the student is going to be learning. So a pre-recorded video that the teacher has done. It could be activities. It could be assessments like a quiz or a test. It could be discussions. It could be a group project, any number of things. But the student will go through the list and will see everything they need to do for the week. So again, I mentioned the first thing in a secondary course that a student will see is the agenda. Actually, that's true in elementary as well. But at the secondary level, a little bit different than what it looks like at the elementary level, but similar idea. At the top, the student will see the objectives. So the student knows why we're doing this. What am I supposed to be learning? What am I supposed to be able to do by the end of this week? So the objectives are always in the agenda. And then below that are all of the tasks for the week. So sometimes students get confused because they will look, they will go into Schoology, they will look at those upcoming assignments that are on the right hand side of the, of the page, or they'll look at their calendar and they'll see things that have due dates and they'll mistakenly think that that's all they have to do. But typically there are a lot of other things that the student has to do before they can get to those graded assignments. And so one of the things that we go over in the cyber program during orientation is teaching the students how to go into the agenda, look at the tasks and start to make a schedule for doing that work through the course of the week. So for example, the student will see that they have to read a chapter, they have to watch a video, they have to take a quiz. And by seeing that, the student can then start to plan out the week. Many of our teachers in the cyber program, it's not in this example, but many of our teachers include time frame, and that helps the students plan as well. So this video is gonna take you seven minutes to watch, this quiz should take you 20 minutes to take, and so forth. So the students can really plan out. This is an example of what the asynchronous instruction will look like. So this up at the top says week 12 instruction, congruence in overlapping triangles. And so the student's gonna come in and watch a video that the teacher has recorded on, congruent, on overlapping triangles. And what's nice about having pre-recorded videos for the instruction is that the students can watch it as many times as they need to in order to review. There will also be many activities for the students to do. This is an example of an activity that is in a 12th grade American government course. And so the student is going to go to iCivics and they're gonna play a game where they get to pretend to be the president. They're gonna finish the game, take a screenshot of that, write a brief reflection of the experience and then submit it for a grade. I think I mentioned earlier that there will be group projects in the Downingtown Cyber Academy. We would really like our students to be able to work together virtually, of course. So there will be opportunities for students to do that in the activities on a weekly basis. There might not necessarily be a group activity every week, but there will definitely be group activities at least every marking period. And so here's an example of one in an underwater basket weaving course where students may be assigned to a group, they have to do some research, they have to create a Google slideshow, and then they have to present it in a live Zoom meeting with their class. And also notice down below, it's a little bit cut off from the screenshot, but the Downtown Cyber Academy, we try to have a rubric for our graded assignments so students know exactly how they're going to be evaluated. I just want to take a couple minutes to walk you through Edgenuity and what Edgenuity looks like. So Edgenuity, the, when the students log into Schoology, if they're in an Edgenuity course, there's a link in Schoology that will automatically log them into Edgenuity. They don't need to do anything else. And will actually, even though they're in Schoology, will keep them in their Schoology course. 
And when they log into Edgenuity, this is an example of summer school. There will be some tiles where the students can see what courses they're taking and they can see their grade and how they're doing. So obviously in this course, this student's doing very well. They have a 96 and they are 37 complete ahead of schedule. But over here on the left, student only has a 58. They're only 9% complete and they're behind schedule. So students can see that information in Edgenuity right when they log in. If a student clicks on a course tile, this is very similar to uh, the calendar in Schoology but students will have what is called the planner. So the planner, again, this is suggested. Students do not have to do these activities on this specific day, but it will plan it out for them and students can click through and see what they should do that day to stay on pace. Ingenuity will tell them, for example, this will, should take you approximately 40 minutes. And once a student does the activity, Ingenuity will check it off for the student to show them that it's been done. And Edgenuity is very video-based. So you'll see a video where the teacher is explaining something on, the video will be on the right-hand side and then on the left-hand side will be the, the screen that the teacher is sharing with a slideshow or something like that. In the Downingtown Cyber Academy, I wanna talk briefly with you about grades and parent access. So Schoology is our main hub in the Downingtown Cyber Academy. All of the students' grades are visible in Schoology. So if you are a parent of a student in the Downingtown Cyber Academy, you will get a parent access code if you don't already have one You'll set up your parent account so that you can go in at any time and view the student's grades and some other information that's available through the parent access account. In addition to having the grades in Schoology, the student's current grades will also be visible in Edgenuity and parents can also access, um, request an account to access that as well. If the parent does not wanna go into Schoology or Edgenuity, all of the grades for the Downingtown Cyber Academy courses are also put into Infinite Campus. So the parent can go into Infinite Campus and view the grades there as well. Synchronous sessions, I've been getting a lot of questions about these. And so I'm happy to tell you that there will be synchronous sessions for our cyber courses. Teachers will be offering synchronous sessions every week uh, approximately two per one credit class per cycle. So two sessions for one credit class per cycle. And there's a number of different things that teachers can do in a synchronous session. So the teacher can do direct instruction, can have a whiteboard up on a Zoom screen, for example, and be working out a problem or formula or showing a presentation the teacher can put kids into breakout rooms and have them working on a group project. The teacher can be there just to answer questions or for extra help, or especially, for example, at the elementary level, maybe doing something that's more just community building, like having a, a Monday morning meeting in Zoom. Hopefully the students feel very well supported in the Downingtown Cyber Academy. We start the year with an orientation and we have orientation for both parents and students where we go over all of the technical things they're going to need to know in order to be successful. So that will include everything they need to know for Schoology, for their Google Drive, if there's any additional apps that they need to know on their iPad, anything like that we cover during the orientation. We also talk during the orientation about some soft skills. And I already mentioned one of them. So for example, teaching the students how to, this is mostly for the older students, teaching them how to go into their agenda, how to figure out what they need to do for the week and how to make a plan. So that's also something that we would talk about in the orientation. There is Homer Club at East and West that students can go in, or if the teacher is available in a building, because again, the teachers all work in the district, 
So if the teacher has availability in a building and a student wants to go and meet with that teacher one-on-one -on -one for extra help, they can. And of course, teachers are also available through Zoom to have a virtual meeting with the student if that's needed for extra help. This is just a, a quick look at the pacing. So there is all of the work that is due for the week. It, it is available in the course at the beginning of the week. So the students can log in on Monday and see everything that they have to do for that week. There will be a suggested pacing guide, especially at the elementary. The teachers will actually tell them, you want to do this on Monday, you want to do this on Tuesday. It is a suggestion, but a useful one. Same thing with secondary. The teachers will put some due dates on items that say it's a good idea to have this done on Tuesday, good idea to have this done on Wednesday, but the actual due dates for assignments for Schoology are at the end of the week. If you're taking a course in Edgenuity, then that course is self-paced. Again, these are um, mostly AP classes and um, some higher level electives. Those are self-paced to the end of the marking period. All right, I just want to uh, finish up with some information about registration. This is actually a new slide. So this um, information should be coming out to parents today if it hasn't already. But we are asking in the Downingtown Area School District that if parents want their children to start the Downingtown Cyber Academy on the first day of school that you register by August 3rd. If you register by August 3rd, you will be guaranteed to have a start date of the first day of school. If you don't register by August 3rd, that does not mean that you missed out. You can still register, but your students may have to start with their original schedule which may be in the buildings until they receive their cyber schedule. We just need to have enough time in the district to make sure we can register the student, adjust the courses and have teachers ready for that student. So again, it's really important that if students are planning to start in the cyber program on the first day of school, that you wanna register by August 3rd. I also want to remind you that August 3rd will be after the school board approves our final plan for the fall. So the final plan for the fall will be put in, for, put in front of the board next week. The board will determine whether or not they're going to approve it. That'll go up on our website. And then the parents have about a week, a little more than a week after, actually it's, yeah, it's about a week after that. Parents can look at the plan for the fall make some final decisions and then register by the third and still be able to have their students start in the cyber program on the first day of school. If students want to go back to the brick and mortar, again, with the potentially high volume of students that are interested in the cyber program, we are asking parents to, if they want, if they're in the cyber program and they want to switch back into the brick and mortar, that they do so at the beginning of the marking period or the trimester. So if a student's in the cyber program, the start of marking period two, for example, for sixth to 12th grade is November 5th. So if a student started out in the cyber program and then decided they wanted to go back to the building, they would do so, they would wait to do so until November 5th. And for our K to five students, the start of the trimester the second trimester is December 2nd. So that would be the first time that our elementary students would be able to transfer back to the brick and mortar. And again, there are a lot of reasons to do this. We wanna make sure that we have all the safety protocols in place, that we have the proper staffing and all of that. So that's why we're asking parents to wait to transition students from one to the other at the start of the marking period. So registration for the Downingtown Cyber Academy can be found on our website. Again, it's dasd.org slash cyber. And there are four registrations there, K to five, six to eight, nine to 12, East and West. And then I wanted to just briefly mention 
uh, the Downingtown STEM Academy. If your child attends or is going to attend the Downingtown STEM Academy, you should have received an email from Headmaster Campbell with details about doing the cyber program. But I just wanna to touch upon it briefly here. We're happy to say that the IB, the International Baccalaureate, is allowing schools for one year, the 2020-21 school year only, to do their IB courses through a cyber format, which is wonderful. So what we're asking is if students are in the STEM Academy and they want to do cyber, first of all, they can stay in the Cyber Academy this year because we've gotten permission from IB. So they can stay in the Cyber Academy. If they are in ninth or 10th grade, they just fill out the application and just select either ninth or 10th grade. We'll work with the counselors to get your schedule. If you're in 12th grade, you're already a year into the IB program. We will figure out what you're supposed to be taking and we'll work to get you that schedule as well. The only small difference will be with 11th grade. Again, because we're trying to get these courses cyber that we didn't currently have because IB wouldn't allow it, we need to narrow down the choices for 11th grade IB. So if you're a rising 11th grader, what we did was we picked the most popular courses for the IB program that most of our students select. And we're going to be offering those courses for students who are going to be juniors who want to stay at STEM, but who want to do the cyber program. So if you're an 11th grader, when you register, you will actually be making your new IB selections at that time. So again, Headmaster Campbell sent out an email with much more detail about this. Hopefully you had a chance to read that. And if you're interested in doing the cyber program for STEM, that is now a separate application that is on our website. Okay, so uh, I'm going to wrap it up with some Q&A. So what I would like you to do is the tiny URL is up on the screen. If you type into any web browser, tinyurl.com slash DASD Q&A. There is a form there to fill out. We're just asking for your name, your township, if you wanna share that with us, and then whatever question you have about the cyber program that we haven't already answered. We do have an FAQ on our website. So please note, FAQ are our most frequently asked questions. So it's not every question we're being asked because that would there's not enough room on the internet for that but we have taken all of the most frequently asked questions and put them on our website as well. So if you don't have a chance to hear the answers to some of these questions tonight, you can go on our website and see the frequently asked questions and the answers there. So I'm just going to switch my screen over. Okay, so uh, the first question is from Shweta from Upper Euclid. And she asks, will all the t STEM Academy 10th grade courses per Diploma English Literature be offered via Cyber Academy? Yes, the plan is that whatever students need pre-diploma for 10th grade that we'll have available in the cyber program for this year. I need to give that caveat at the end of everything I say about STEM. Uh, Raj from Upper Euclid asks, can a STEM Academy 10th grade student do full-time cyber? Yes. Uh, Jen from East Brandywine asks, is there a deadline by which we need to register for the 2021 school year? And actually Jen from East Brandywine asks, uh, Jen, a different Jen, asks the same question. So August 3rd is the deadline for registering for the cyber program to guarantee that your child will be ready to go in the cyber program by the first day of school. So if you don't register by August 3rd, you still can register, but the student may start out 
with a building schedule, having to go to the building before we can finish their registration and transition them into the cyber program. So if you want your child to start on the first day of school, August 3rd would be the deadline for that. Michael Collin, oh, I won't say the last name. Michael asked from West Bradford, how does taking exams work online? So there's actually a number of different ways that we do assessments in the cyber program. Uh, there is your very traditional tests and quizzes that students have to take. The teachers will explain to the students what the rules are. Can they use their notes? Can they access other sources? Um, are they supposed to take this, you know, just by answering on their own? Uh, but we really strive also to have alternate forms of assessment. So a portfolio, a project, a paper, other ways to determine what a student knows that's not a typical multiple choice type exam. Also, some teachers in the Cyber Academy will do assessments through a Zoom meeting. So our world language teachers love to do this, for example. So they may say, you're going to have a quiz today on the rooms of the house and everybody's gonna log into Zoom and we're, I'm just gonna quiz you during the Zoom meeting and it's gonna count as a quiz question, a, a quiz grade. So to answer your question, number of different ways to do assessments. Um, Okay, so Mary from West Pikeland asks, if a student's required to have uh, special ed for a certain amount of face-to-face -face time, do they have to go to the home school for that based on the IEP? So to answer your question, maybe, what'll happen is if a student has an IEP, you will meet with the IEP team and talk about it and determine what is the best way for the student to get the support. Allison from Euclid asks, will there be enough Cyber Academy teachers for, because of, of this potential large number of students? And so one of the reasons why we're asking parents to enroll by August 3rd is so that we can make sure that we have all the right teachers in place for the cyber program. So again, just wanna emphasize the importance of that date to make sure we have all the right teachers in place. Uh, Michelle asks from Upper Euclid for hybrid students, so students who have a part-time schedule, it says they have to do PE in person. Is that being waived? Uh, so yes, typically in the cyber program, you cannot take health or PE as a part-time student. You can only take it as a full-time student, but that because of COVID-19, that is being waived for this school year only. Um, Cheryl from West Bradford asked, what would a kindergartner schedule look like? So very similar to what I showed you uh, just for a typical elementary in terms of the amount of math that they'll have, reading and so forth. And same thing with the synchronous sessions, but perhaps what the teacher may do in a synchronous session may be different. And perhaps the length of the syn synchronous session might be a little shorter because of the kindergarten attention span. Uh, but very similar to just your typical schedule that I went over earlier in the um, open house. So Amanda from West Bradford asks, will there be a principal or an administrator designated to the Cyber Academy? Yes, I am the administrator that oversees the cyber program. Um, Jay Kumar from Upper Euclid asks, how are, this is a good question, how are assessments like PSSAs in the cyber school? So I will give you my pre-COVID answer. Prior to the pandemic, students who were in the cyber program were required to come into the buildings to take any state mandated test. So that includes PSSAs and Keystone, Keystone exams. I do not know how that'll work this year. So we will have to wait and see. The state waived the requirement last year. So um, I don't know what alternatives are at the moment. I can't unfortunately answer that question. Um, so Kate from Euclid says, what would a hybrid schedule look like for a kindergartner? So 
if a kindergartner, it, it's actually the same for any elementary student, you would reach out to the principal. You would find out what subjects are being taught at what time and determine if or when you would like to come in for certain courses. So it depends on when a class is being taught, when it's available. And of course, it also depends on whether there are seats available because you may be interested in taking math face-to-face, -face, but that, that class may be at the maximum number of students. So you need to work with the principal to find out what's available and whether there are seats. And that's true actually kindergarten through 12th grade. Um, <laughs> Joey from Euclid asks, when do I need to wake up? Joey, are you a student? I don't know, but I'm gonna assume you are. So if you're in the cyber program, um, if you do not have a synchronous schedule, a synchronous lesson scheduled, you can wake up whenever you'd like, as long as you get your work done. That'll be my short answer. Uh, Susan asks uh, from Upper Euclid, question on switching from cyber to brick and mortar. Oops, sorry. Uh, can elementary students choose to enroll in the brick and mortar in the first trimester and then choose to switch to cyber in the second trimester? Yes. Yes, you can do that. Reagan asks, if cyber enrollment increases substantially, will all staff still be DASD staff? Yes. If we need to hire more teachers in the district, we will do so but we are probably going to be able to use the teachers we have because if so many students are going into the cyber program, then that means we wouldn't need the teachers necessarily in the building. We would need them in the cyber program instead. And also I know lots of people are very concerned about uh, teachers you know, who for whatever reason can't be in the building. And so the cyber program is a great opportunity for the teachers also to be virtual rather than face-to-face. Um, Amrita from East Calum asks, is there a limit on how many kids can enroll? No, no, there's no limit. Uh, Sydney from Downingtown says she is a STEM junior. What IB classes will be offered? Um, they seem to have missed the email from Mr. Campbell. Okay, so two things, Sydney, that you can do. The first is if you go to the registration it, when you open it up and start to fill it out as a junior, you can see what the junior choices are and you know, and then don't submit it if you don't feel like registering, but you can see them there. Or just send an email to the headmaster and he will be happy to share that information with you. Um, so Sarah asks, how will students with IEPs be supported if they're in a special placement? And again, that's something that will have to be determined on a case-by-case -case basis in an IEP meeting. So I can't really answer that in general terms. Uh, John from West Bradford asks, have cyber teachers been chosen and notified yet for the fall? And the answer is no. Uh, we need to know how many people are coming and then we will let them know as soon as possible. Uh, Ray from West Bradford asks, if a child starts in the cyber program and the entire district shuts down due to COVID, does the child stay in the cyber program? And the answer is yes. So if we, if you're in the cyber program and then all of a sudden a month in, the district is completely online, you, st you stay where you are. Remember, we don't want anyone switching unless it's the beginning of a trimester or the beginning of a marking period. Um, Christine from Euclid asks, when will we know the schedule for to do part-time for Marsh Creek? So Christine, um, I would recommend that you reach out to the um, building principals and ask that question. Uh, some of the buildings have completed their schedules for the fall and some have not. So I would just call them and ask. Um, 
So Steve asks from West Bradford, do I have a list of blended learning courses for second and kindergarten? There are no blended courses for, for anybody under ninth grade. So a blended course is half, it's an alternating schedule. So half in, half out, that's only available nine to 12. So if you are in, um, I think he said kindergarten and second grade, you can do a part-time schedule where you come in for some classes, but you gotta be in for the whole class or out for the whole class. It's only those two choices. Um, Olivia asks, if an elementary school student does a hybrid schedule, will they be attending their local elementary school? Yes, yes, you stay in your local, build, your local school. So if you are at East Ward and you wanna come in for art, you would do that at East Ward. Uh, Janine from Euclid asks, how many live sessions will be, will be provided per week for a kindergarten student? So we're saying about 90 minutes for a subject. And so the teacher will make the decision about, so for example, I doubt very highly kindergartners are going to be able to do math for 90 minutes in a Zoom session. So a kindergarten teacher might choose to do more frequent sessions that are shorter and maybe a teacher of some older students might choose to do less frequent sessions that are a little longer, okay? But it's approximately 90 minutes for um, either one credit class or for a subject at the elementary level. Um, Amanda asks, are the videos, the synchronous sessions usually at the same time every day for each course? And the answer would be no, it will be definitely be during the school hours but for example, even at the elementary level, there are different teachers. So for example, in fourth and fifth grade, you would have one teacher for ELA and one teacher for math, whether you're in the building or not. Um, and you also have all the different Encore teachers. And so those might be at different times based on the teacher's availability and schedule because the teacher may actually be teaching some of the brick and mortar students. So for example, a music teacher may be teaching some kids in the brick and mortar and then may have one section that's online. So it kind of depend on that schedule, uh, but the schedule will be available for parents um, way ahead of time so that they can plan around it. And it will be during obviously school, the school hours. Um, can second grade be done in the Cyber Academy? Yes, you can do the Cyber Academy kindergarten through 12th grade. Um, David asked from East Brandywine, you mentioned homework for secondary, but not for elementary. Is there homework? No, not in the cyber program. And there really isn't homework for secondary either. It's just, I, I mentioned homework because I was talking about how much time you would spend on a class. So there really is no, it's all homework because you're all at home doing all your work. <laughs> so there's nothing, nothing like homework. Are AP courses offered via the Cyber Academy? Yes, um, Kathy asked that from West Bradford. Lots of AP, we have AP French, AP Gov, AP US History, AP Psychology, AP Calculus. They're all in the program of study that's at dasd.org slash cyber. And you can see a list of all of the AP courses that we have available, AP Lit, AP Lang, and many others. Um, Rashmi from West Bradford asked, will there be live classes or is it just games and fun activities? So Rashmi, to answer your question, yes. The teachers will continue to do fun things, especially at the elementary level to get kids excited about being together and being with their teacher, but there will be instruction and activities for the student as well. So there will be learning that occurs during that synchronous session. Um, April asks, are the cyber teachers the same teachers that are teaching in the brick and mortar? As in, are they doubling up both in-person classes and cyber? So the, no, the answer to that is no. So teachers are given, for example, if you're a second grade teacher, you would either have a second grade face-to-face -face class or you would have a second grade cyber class. Now it's a little bit different when you start to get into the middle and the high school. So if you are a middle school science teacher and you're teaching five periods a day, 
you may have three periods where it's face-to-face -face class and two periods where it's a cyber course, but teachers never responsible for both online and in-person in the same uh, prep. The first part of your question, are they the same teachers? Yes. So again, teachers may be splitting up their schedules. The one thing though is if you are, for example, in second grade, you may, your teacher will be a second grade teacher in the district, but it may not be a teacher from your building. Okay, and you may be in a second grade with kids from all over the district in that one class, which could be kind of cool. Um, Stephanie asks from West Bradford, how many live sessions? Oh, I already answered that question, sorry. Um, about the live sessions. Brooke asks, for kindergarten, you mentioned it was three and a half hours a day. Is that every day? Um, again, that's really approximate, but yes, somewhere between three to four hours is approximately how much time the students would be doing their work. And it is a mixture of online and offline. So they're not, it's, that doesn't mean they're sitting in front of their iPad for the whole four hours. Um, okay, Therese asks about chorus and trumpet. So we offer music classes in the cyber program, but not chorus, not band, not orchestra, not strings. So if a student really wants to take those things, then I would recommend a part-time schedule where the students do most of their classes uh, online, but then they come into the building for one of those other classes that I just mentioned. So Lauren asks, can you finish all your schoolwork on Monday? <laughs> I don't know if that's a parent or a student. If you can get it all done on Monday, I, I, I would wonder how well you did it, but I guess that technically it is possible, but I would be very worried if someone were able to finish the week's worth of work in one day. Um, ben asks from Euclid, you had close to 400 students last year. What do you expect the requests for enrollment to be? And is there a limit you can handle? So um, I have no expectations now. I have no idea what it's going to be or how many people will choose to do cyber. I've given up trying to guess. So, but I will say absolutely. If 13,000 kids decide that they need to do cyber, then we'll figure out a way to handle it. And we've got the teachers for 13,000 kids face to face, we can get them for cyber. I don't think it'll be 13,000, but you get the idea. But yes, we'll be able to handle however many decide to come. Um, okay, so some, um, as I'm going through these questions, some of them are, are repeats. So I'm just going to... Um, So Shannon asks, do secondary students re-register for new classes if they start cyber? So yes, um, when you open up the registration form for a secondary student, the student will select the cyber courses that are available. Hopefully most of the things that they wanna take are available through the cyber program. If there's one or two things that aren't available, again, I recommend talking to the school about a part-time schedule if they want. Um, Gretchen asks, will AP art be offered via cyber? cyber? Unfortunately, no. However, AP art is offered blended at East. I don't believe it is at West. I don't think there were enough registrations. Um, so if you, if the students at East, well, it's, yes, if the students at East, AP art meets three times out of a six day cycle if you take it blended. Um, so Mamatha from Euclid asks, can we change our mind after registering for the cyber program for the first trimester? Yes. So if the first trimester ends and you decide you want to go back to the brick and mortar, then you can um, transfer at that time. Amy from Wallace Township asks, will elementary students be learning from pre-recorded or live teaching? And the answer is yes. 
we will have both. So we will have pre-recorded videos that the students can watch and learn, but we will also have live instruction during Zoom, scheduled Zoom meetings with the teacher. Um, So Kristen asks, will my child's current IEP case manager be their cyber case manager? That's how it's been in the past. Um, so I anticipate that it will continue to be going forward. I can't say for sure, because again, I don't know what happens if so many students transfer into cyber. Um, but for the past nine years, the students have stayed with their um, current case manager. So Will from West Bradford asks, will there be a counselor for the Cyber Academy, particularly for elementary? So that's a great question. And it's very similar to the one that was just asked about the case managers. So in the past, students have stayed with their counselor in the building. And uh, so there's, which is for most students, they like that because they keep the counselor that they had. Um, again, if there's so many students that go into the cyber program, we will probably look at whether or not it makes sense to have a cyber counselor who's specific to the program, uh, but I can't answer that at this time. Um, Sneetha asks, if you were at STEM, how will labs work? Great question. And that's actually a good question for East and West as well. So labs, can be handled in a number of different ways for our virtual for our online cyber courses. First of all, you can do a virtual lab. So there's a lot of simulations um, where you're doing it virtually and you're simulating what the lab would have been. So that's one way. Sometimes teachers will record a lab so you can watch the teacher or other students doing the lab and then you work off of the data that's been produced from that lab. Um, sometimes there are common household items that you can use to do your labs at home safely. So you may have some of those. So a number of different ways that we will make sure that students are able to do their science labs. Okay, um, I want to be cognizant of time. So I'm just going to answer a few more questions. And, um, and then again, if, they, if questions are being asked repeatedly, I'll make sure that they're on our FAQ on the website. Oh, this is a wonderful question. Amanda from East Brandywine says, does attending the Cyber Academy take funding away from the schools in the same way a charter would? No, and I'm so glad you brought that up. That's a great question. So if a student goes to a cyber charter school, the district is required by law to send tuition to the cyber charter. It's $11,000 for a regular education student. And it's $23,000 for a special ed student. And again, that's by law, we don't get to decide, oh, we're only sending you five. It's whatever, whatever the, it, the state says we have to send, that's what we have to send. So if you start to multiply that, that is a huge amount of money that leaves the district when kids go to a cyber charter. When we did the survey in the, um, I think it was in June, about a thousand parents said that they were considering doing a cyber program. If all 1,000 of those parents went to a cyber charter, it would cost the district $11 million up to $22 million that we would have to send to those cyber schools. And that's a huge financial loss for the district. To answer your question, if they stay in the cyber program, no. The cyber program is part of the Downingtown Area School District. So we don't lose any funding when students do our program. Um, Karen from Wallace Township asked, what percentage of students in recent years have been high school versus elementary? Honestly, in the last few years, the large majority, I can't do the percentages off the top of my head, but a large majority of the students are in high school. And then we have fewer students at the middle level and then fewer students at the elementary level. I think this is a very unique time um, when that'll probably change. Um, okay, so let's see.
Kevin asks from West Bradford, what happens if students are sick and they can't do work? We're gonna handle it the same exact way that we would handle it if the students were in a face-to-face -face class. The teacher will work with the student to catch up on the work that they've missed once they are well again. <laughs> one, one student, I think this is a student, it's Billy again is the name. Will we have midterms and final exams? Yes, high schools will still have midterms and final exams in their cyber courses. Um, again, a lot of these are repeats. I'll, I'll end with this question. Um, this was asked by Amy from East Brandywine. If you register by August 3rd, are you guaranteed a spot in the DASD Cyber Academy? So it's not really about a spot. We don't have a set, like we, we don't say we're only taking a thousand and that's it. So there's no spots, which is good, right? What the reason why we're saying August 3rd is because we want to just make sure that you, we have time to get everything set up, get you a teacher and have you ready to go on the first day of school. So if you register by August 3rd, you're guaranteed to be ready for the first day of school. Okay, so I'm gonna stop there because it's um, almost 20 minutes after eight. So we've, I've gone long. But thank you very much for your time and attention. If, uh, if your questions were not answered again, we'll be going through them and put the most frequently asked ones on our website. But you can also reach out cyberacademy at dasd.org to ask your questions about the program. Thank you very much for your time. Have a really great evening.